What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you guys watched the last video, you would have seen that I went through uh, quite a bit of work, got all the suspension replaced on the Miata, got full energy suspension kit, all that jazz. And before I put the car back on the ground, I gotta rip the transmission out and I gotta swap the clutch disc out because it started slipping on me, which I should have learned my lesson um, with the Del Souls clutch when I did it last. I, I use an eBay clutch and those are hit or miss. Sometimes you get lucky and you get a good one, like the one that's in the Integra here. That's an XTD Stage 2, I think, which I don't, I don't know, it, it, it's fine. It ha it's been in there for two years now. No issues at all on that car, I beat the piss out of it. And I don't know what it was, maybe it's the torque rating. Um, not that the Miata makes monster torque or anything, maybe around 170-ish pounds. Um, but I don't know, the clutch is slipping. It's an XTD Stage 3 6 puck. I don't like it, I absolutely hate it. I don't like puck clutches, I don't like that it's just on and off. I like being able to slip it a little bit because I like drivability. So, being that being said, I went ahead and ordered a 949 Racing, aka Super Miata clutch pressure plate kit. So that would be the clutch disc. It's rated for 220 pounds of torque. It's supposed to have OE pedal feel or close to. Um, and they, I don't know, they really test their stuff. So I run their Super, Miata 949 Racing uh, coolant reroute and it's fantastic so I went to, to go with them in the first place. Uh, the other choice was Flying Miata but I heard that the Flying Miata ones are also kind of hit or miss. A lot of people love them, a lot of people have issues with them but theirs is a lot more expensive and Flying Miata has been in the business for a long time but Super Miata really tests their stuff so. Um, we got Doge because transmissions are heavy and I'm tired because the bushings kick my butt. So tomorrow, tomorrow, I don't know, I, wow. Today, um, yeah transmissions on these aren't that hard it's just a process uh power plant frame drain the trans drive shaft um starter take the slave off unbolt the housing drop it don't crush yourself let's get started <laughs> i'm gonna start by taking the slave cylinder off come in here the passenger side wheel well it's back yonder and then the starter is right above it those are the honestly the hardest parts the rest of it's pretty easy Actually, I lied. I'm gonna take the center console off first because we have to pull the shifter turret out to drop the transmission. There's the turret, just three 10 mil bolts. I can't do a one-handed, so I'm gonna do that and then uh, move back to the underside of the car. Uh, so just down here, it's a 24 mil on the strain plug for the trans. Just gonna pull it out, and uh, if you've never worked with manual transmission fluid before, rule number one is don't get it on you. Yeah, it stinks. It stinks. We're gonna try our best here. Uh, Looks like it's pretty ready to be changed anyway. It's been in there for six months of hard driving. Arizona driving? Yeah. What are you doing? Being noisy. I got a little bit. A little bit of what? You're magnetized now? Oh, a little bit of metal? Yeah. Souvenirs? Souvenirs. <laughs> Smelly, smelly. We're gonna set this out of the car so it doesn't stink it up in here. Oh, that was probably my hand. <laughs> Never mind. I do know what that is. So we're just working on getting the power plant frame, and in the meantime, I gotta do the hard, daunting job of breaking my exhaust free. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Perks of using V bands and building your own exhaust. Oh, that stuff smells so bad. <laughs> it's just wafting in my face. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> As I almost spill it. That was close. <laughs> uh. Okay, here's my mid pipe. To the parts bench it goes. Voila. 
You're not being of much help today. Do your part. Where's the bunnies? <laughs> Go get the bunnies. Go get the bunnies. She does her best. Still working on drive shaft. I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't say still working. You've only been down here for five minutes. <laughs> it's going actually relatively pretty quick. Yeah, once he's got that off and I get the starter off, then it's just the bell housing bolts, and then we can pull this sucker off. I think I got the starter ready to come out. There's only two 14 mil bolts and then a 12 mil that holds it to like a plate that goes to the engine mount, but I think that plate is to hold the starter, so that way you can actually just unbolt the two 14s on it and pull the trans off. I've only pulled this all out uh, once, and that was all together engine and trans and everything, so I don't remember, it was six months ago. Doge is just finishing up on the drive shaft, and once the drive shaft is out, we can slide the power plant frame, power plant frame over really quick, and should be able to oh, just scoot it off the transmission. Oh, I got a ground right here. I got to pull off really quick. And other than that, uh, PPF off, trans out. Oh, I mean bell housing bolts too, but I mean self-explanatory. Bigfoot, she's snug. There she go. Oop. Oop. Okay, maybe more than three pounds. Maybe like seven. A little juicy. A little juicy. And this also up here. It's a one point eight drive shaft. It's a beefy boy. You one six owners wouldn't know nothing about that. We upgrade. <laughs> Hashtag one six. <laughs> what are you doing? You helping? Keeping them safe? Being a good project supervisor? <laughs> or street sweeping? She looks worried. <laughs> it's like, why are you doing this? <laughs> it's like, one, no, two, I see three, the four. uppers. I think there's like six or seven. Uh, do I want to get the uppers first? No, let's do that. Make my life easier. I don't even need the elephant trunk on there. Having all the swivels helps. I t yeah, I told you the E-clip is the <laughs> yeah. <best> clip. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Um, did you wanna, do you have these memories? No. <laughs> okay. Let me try. Yeah, they should, I know a couple are longer. The, the That's longer. the upper or middle. Okay. The lower, I would assume the lowers would be the shortest, but you never know. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll make, I'll mark them. Yep. Easy. Mm -hmm. Get the jiggle up front. Oh, my God. Okay. okay. <laughs> you want to grab a uh, dolly or something? Or slowly set it down? You want to slide out? I got it. I'm trying to not kick the camera or the jack stand out. <laughs> okay, this. Slowly set it down there. Try and... Yeah, from under it. Yeah. Move it. Okay. I just gotta get my arm out. Okay. We're good. If um, you can get a hand on it, I can uh, get my arm out. E. Okay. Cool. Gucci. A little yeah. clutch dusty under there. Not too bad, though. See, that wasn't the hardest job in the world to get out. Well, here is the uh, old eBay XTD one. Definitely dirty, but I mean, obviously the clutch gets used, so we'll pop this thing off really quick, see what the damage is to it. Ew. Uh, a couple. Heat spots, nothing crazy. Should be able to just scuff it with some sandpaper and be okay. Got all that situated, just sanded the uh, flywheel a bit. It, I, even the pressure plate, Doge, just looking at the pressure plate, and the pressure plate has the same three heat spots 
and these pucks are worn really strangely so I think that's not so much like an installation issue because I definitely torqued everything to spec uh, lined it up with the clutch on my tool and stuff I think that's just because it's a cheap eBay clutch like probably just falling apart on me um, but I gotta go or we're gonna go get brake fluid really quick uh, or brake cleaner and trans fluid because I didn't pick any up yet so uh, we'll be back back from the store uh, I'm just running some Valvoline MTF synchro mesh I've had good luck with this stuff that's what I run in all my Hondas so I think I put this in the trans last time had to get a different fluid pump because mine is different and just tedious and annoying and then just some brake clean to clean the hub and uh, the grape drink shout out Zosh uh, yeah clean it up get it back in there uh, get this back oh and I tried Getting the, I, try, I need front rotors. I think I had mentioned that already because I got the stop tech sport pads and I need new rotors because mine are chewed up. Uh, Rallys doesn't have any at all. Like they have one that they can order. They don't have any at their hub. They don't have any at their DC. Like they just can't get them. So I got to figure that out. Apparently Miata rotors are a very hot commodity nowadays, but whatever. See, this thing's all worn down, chewed up. Just looking at this old clutch before I put the new one in, the wear marks are all on the inside of the pucks, which I don't really understand that. And then noticed even also on the back of some of these, it like falls off onto the edge. It, it's just really inconsistent. So I don't, I don't know enough about clutches to really understand that. And then uh, a few heat spots, it still feels very level. I don't feel any gouges, like any ridges in here. So I don't know what that's all about. Um, hopefully the flywheel should be okay still. I mean, I, I can't imagine that's going to really destroy anything. The new clutch is, I don't know, should be fine. It's a good enough clutch. I shouldn't have to worry about it, but I don't know. I mean, these things happen. This is an eBay kit. You can only expect so much out of it. And I obviously bought it full, full well knowing that it was taking a chance. And yeah, I mean, it was a chance I was willing to gamble. I mean, like I said, that one still holds up just fine. Uh, Del Sol had an eBay one for a while until I went B-Series, and I had a good Exeti to drop in there. So, that was, whatever. Uh, this one, I, lesson, I don't know. Lesson learned? Lesson learned. Probably not. I'll probably buy another eBay one because at some point. <laughs> from Tell them not to buy another eBay one in the comments. Yeah. Right I mean... There's lots of good stuff on eBay. <laughs> you just have to, <laughs> clutches apparently is not some of them. <laughs> you just gotta know which stuff on eBay to buy. You're gonna, you're gonna have to follow Harbor Freight rules with that. Anything that rotates, anything that's powered, don't buy it on eBay, don't buy it on Harbor Freight. Yeah, viewer discretion, user discretion. But yeah, no, I'm pretty much done with the eBay clutches from now on. Um, flywheels, eh, not so bad. That one's light, that one's light, neither of them are broken yet. Uh, good solid quality uh whatever whatever let's just get back into this this is the new clutch disc gonna spray this crap off really quick get the juice if any of you guys have any uh, ebay clutch stories let me know in the comments down below <laughs> okay we're good pristine got the new clutch and pressure plate installed uh put blue loctite on each of the nuts or bolts because you never know just better safe than sorry they could vibrate out uh with how much power this roundhouse kicking mm, freaking destroyer of a miata makes you never know uh and then yeah uh torqued you know in three stages essentially and then torqued to 17 foot pounds uh fsm shows between 15 and 19 so i don't know what the jump is and we got orange on me because when we cleaned it it like ate the paint so um yeah it's all good to go we're just gonna fight with the transmission now get this all bolted back up and if you notice my super miata clutch now matches my super miata coolant reroute uh you know if you know you know Okay, so um, I don't know. I'll throw the camera up on just this little tripod thing. We'll try and get this thing squeezed up there as best we can. Whew. Okay, yeah, this little guy comes in handy. So it took us two different attempts to get this trans up. The first time, the clutch felt like it slipped a little bit, like out of the way, um, when I was torquing the pressure plate down. So, uh, we fought, we lost, took it off, we retorqued it, recentered it, uh, fought again, lost again, <laughs> and then I think third time was a charm. We just kind of sent it, we just rammed it, we were both tired and pissed. Uh, now, we're just tightening bolts, you know, just chilling under your car. <sighs> At least it's not a hundred and... Okay. Well, bell housing bolts are good. Well, not good, but they're all threaded in by hand. <sighs> 
sure a lot of you guys, according to my analytics, are between the ages of 24 and 35, so I'm sure you make me feel, or you feel like I'm being sort of, like, exaggerative when I say, like, I feel old. I've been skating for 15 years. My damn body hurts. Crawling under a car like this for three hours, four hours, nope. plus... Don't mind that. <laughs> working on the car all day yesterday. My damn body is so tired. You know how nasty my hair feels right now? The grungiest? Yeah. This is like the only bolt that doesn't want. Oh, there we go. That was it. I see your little Miata. It's your little Miata now. <laughs> the little Miata that could. Okay. Kind of like a shopping cart. Yeah, right. Okay, so... Everything else is done. Uh, we got the underside finished. The only thing that we have to do is fill the transmission. And, um... That should be it. I mean, I'm just finishing this stuff up while I can. Oh, dear. Just put back together. Doge is just starting to fill the transmission. Uh, it takes two quarts, pretty much, on the dot almost. Uh, a little fill plug or fill thingy, doohickey, whatever it's called there. Uh, shoot, so once it's filled, I just gotta attach the mid pipe, which is on the table yet. And this thing is ready to freaking go. Ready to rip some clutch dumps. Ready to grandma drive for three to five hundred miles. Yeah, ready to grandma drive. <laughs> Uh, I still gotta put my turbo blanket back on, and then I do actually, like I said, have to order rotors because I'm not gonna put new pads on with those rotors. So those rotors are well trashed. I'm not even gonna bother. So I don't mind waiting another day or two. I'll check Amazon really quick. But so this is the other thing I bought from Super Miata. Uh, you could always just make one yourself, but I mean it was like six bucks, so I bought it from them. This is a clutch switch bypass, so that way uh, you don't have to press the clutch in to turn your car on because a lot of the companies say that with aftermarket clutches, at least on the Miatas for sure, uh, it puts a lot of wear with more aggressive clutches on the thrust bearing in the engine. So I bought this just to be more safe than sorry and I, I don't like using the clutch in when I start the car. I never leave it in gear and only time I do is when I'm on a hill, which is rare. Um, and even then, I, I always check my gears before I start it, so not a big deal. I just gotta crawl into the dash really quick. I just gotta figure out exactly how far up this plug is. Right, I'm gonna fire it up really quick. I just finished putting the uh, dump tube and stuff on. Uh, I still have to put my under tray on and my other intercooler piece, but I do wanna fire it up, make sure that my fittings don't leak because uh, I just changed those the other day because I had a leaky one. Double check that those are good, and I just wanna make sure that the clutch actually engages the gears, you know, so let's, let's fire this up. Grab the keys over here. Technically speaking, this should work without pushing the clutch in. So we have our gears. He just filled it with fluid, so let's try it. May be hard to start because I mean, speedy life. Okay, that didn't sound right. Uh, I had to run and get coolant and then I had to go get the brake rotors for this thing and it gave me time to look this over I've been playing with the computer double checking my TPS and everything is good and uh, I was spraying around for vacuum leaks and I just happened to notice that This vacuum line right here was actually off. So I think what happened is that when we were When we were rocking the engine back and forth earlier, it may have just come undone so um, that that should be uh, the source of it. So I'm gonna throw a hose clamp on that just to be safe. It's not like it can go anywhere once it's actually in here, but hose clamp just to be safe. And then uh, it should idle normally now and I can bleed the system like normally. I already popped the ignition stuff off and did all that. And I don't even know why I'm showing this when this is a clutch video, but you guys, but you guys get the point. Uh, problem should be solved. Let me just button this up really quick. Much better. Ignore that backfire. It randomly does that. Uh, I run a speedy EFI plug and play, not the Mega Squirt, and it's something to do with the cranking settings or something. Um, a few other people have that issue too. I, I just haven't got it fixed yet. So clutch in. Clutch feels really easy. It's a little springy, a lot more springy than it was before, but we got all our gears. 
hallelujah. Get my color back to what it was. I like my Scion, or my whitish blue, whatever you want to call it. Fight me. Okay, we're all good. Computer's good. I'm gonna let this thing bleed its cooling system and call it a freaking night. So I'm gonna end this video off here, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe you learned something. Maybe you just thought it was entertaining. If it was either of those things for you, then I, I ask that you would let me know in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, hopefully you've considered subscribing. Uh, I'll bring a, I'll do a follow-up video on this clutch in a few weeks after it's broken in. I'm gonna daily. It's my daily driver now, so I'm gonna. I'll uh, break it in gently. Uh, stay out of boost as much as I can. No high revving. No dumping it, you know, stuff like that, no racing around. Um, and I'll let you guys know. But anyways, guys, do what you love for you about the rest. Uh, go cop a sticker, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.